Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Apple 2. This music and generally the scene here just does not fit with the thought I just randomly thought of while before I recorded it. I just thought to myself, you know, I've like had constant headaches past few days, just like feel like crap, overthinking, and then I just randomly thought, you know what? To constantly seek knowledge is like taking a road that's always bumpy. Wait, no, I'm wording it wrong. That's the thing. Thinking and talking do not kind of work well with me. If, like, I wrote down everything I thought, like, a lot of it would be like a freaking book of, like, interesting quotes or some shit. Basically, to constantly seek knowledge is like... Driving on a bumpy road that never ends. At the end of the day, you'll always have a headache. That's... That's why I thought to myself, just like... Yes, very true. It does, like... The more you know, or the less you know, rather, because you'll never know everything, the more likely you are to be like, My head hurts, why? Well, because you're constantly thinking! <laughs> Suganami's so laugh, man. It's over the top. It's kind of like my over the top laugh. Where I'm like, <laughs> man, he left on his own, and he's already that far off. Suganami so was already way ahead of us, and I could just barely see him from where we were. I guess so. All right. Huh? Can't you tell just by looking? It's a bump. You need a certain technique to be able to ski down this course. Well, I wouldn't quite say that. I don't know how the hell people do it, man, with skiing. Have you ever gone down like a steep hill where you literally like the ground so unbalanced that if you like place your footing wrong you might slip all the way down I can't even handle that shit man imagine skiing just like oh shit 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 stop stop hit the brakes I guess this might be a bit too much for a gun eh huh right there's a side slope over that way so you could go down that one and wait for us those eyes they're kind of creepy I can't really skate it up towards the side slope I'm going down this course, so what do you do? Are there any trees on this slope? If you're scared, why don't you take the side slope? Yeah. You know, I am, like, noticing a distinct lack of trees in this area. Really? Let's go, then. Uh, uh, it's not like all mountains will have just trees everywhere and all that, but come on, it's usually... Well, not always, but still, it would have potentially made for an amusing scene where one of them hits a tree. I told you it doesn't work like that. Skiing into the sunset. How is it? What the hell is this? Just like, oh, we've only just gotten started. Oh shit, the sun's already setting. Amakazu um, was skillfully maneuvering down the Mughal Pass. With her skills, I could barely believe that she was a total beginner. Oh wait, maybe it's with her skis. <laughs> so, you having fun? Well, you sound like you're enjoying yourself. 
And because you sound a bit angry as she said that. Well, it sure does look like she's having fun, that's good. And because and I steadily worked our way down the advanced course. This, like, seriously, this imagery, it looks so cozy, doesn't it? It just, just seems so, like, I don't know. It was already getting dark outside by the time we got down and checked in at the inn. We all went to our rooms to drop off our luggage and change clothes, and then we headed for, uh, then we headed for the dining hall. This is a very cozy looking place, isn't it? Huh? Oh, this thing? I was wearing the necklace Sagrasan had given me. I've been wearing it since before we left. You probably didn't notice it because I was wearing a muffler until a minute ago. It's not a hobby. Nah, Sakura-san did. She told me it was a lucky charm and that I shouldn't take it off. You've already got some kind of necklace there, though. Come on, don't be unreasonable. Now she said that, then I could put her hand on my neck. No way. I shook her hand off of me. Even though I knew she had a habit of touching people like that, sometimes it still made my heart beat a bit faster. Though it seems weird to say it like that, isn't it? She has a habit of touching people. Inappropriately? Well, it's, it depends on the level of someone's comfort zones, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I promised Sigrid that I wouldn't take it off, so I couldn't just hand it over to someone else. <sighs> While I was talking to Nanaka, Wataru shut up, staggering towards the dining hall. Still only four, well, it's still quite a bit, but still, I mean, it's nothing to brag about. <laughs> Just like, I fell 44 times, but at least it didn't fall 48 times, unlike somebody. I'll be so proud you were both pretty bad. Oh well. Well, the beginners compared to incredible feats, I left to go take a seat. Incredible feats. Hey, can I sit here? Well, I... Well, no, it isn't an accomplishment, really, because there are no trees in the area, it seems. But if there were trees in the areas and they said we only hit a tree three times, that would be an accomplishment. And Zoomikaze and Tsuganami were sitting at a table for four. I <laughs> shall gladly take this seat then. Gratefully. Oh well. I bowed exaggeratedly and sat down. Really? You know, Rambo and I like comment on the place looking cozy and all that. I just like random thing, a dark twist to this whole thing. And it just totally doesn't suit the music or anything. The Brit, like, think of it, it's just like, imagine the owners are actually, like, they take skiing victims in and they just like, think that they're going to be like, just healed up and just like, rested and all that. But no, 
they let them die and then use them as the food. Dun dun dun! That would totally bring the dog as to as possible. Be a bit like the plot twist in the Walking Dead game, wouldn't it? So, I think Here you go, I have no voice actor. Some guy who looked like he was tanned from skiing all day showed up with the food. Tanned from skiing? Can you actually get a tan from skiing? Well, you learn something new every day. Let's have a taste then. I picked up some food and put it in my mouth. Hey! Akane was yelling at the table next to us. Really now? What about it? Well, it is a pretty small place. So, what should we do? Wataru was being really loud. I guess so. She was certainly making herself clear. I don't mind going after you guys, really. Okay, you guys go first and just come and get us when you're done in there, okay? Wataru didn't get any say in the matter there. It's just like, I'm just like thinking of the time in Persona 4 when like the, the guys get totally screwed over and there's just like the girls get to uh, bathe and all that and then they end up extended time in there and don't even realize it. and once they realize it it's like oh well it's like oh you bastards okay we'll just laze about until then Wait, I just realized something. She's a robot, right? Well, no shit. She just stated that quite a long time ago, but... Why would a, a robot need to... And how? We malfunction, or... I have no idea. She sure eats a lot for being a robot. Where the hell's it go anyway? She's a, I mean, they don't really explain this at all. Is it just like a human as well or what? Eating fast leads to indigestion though, doesn't it? I know from experience, like, eat really fast and then my stomach's like, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Really? How cozy, I was relaxing in our room. The room where Wataru Suganami and I were staying was in the middle between Anzu and Amikaze's room and Akane, Koko and Anaka's room. Man, I was a mouthful, I'm so full. There should still be some time before the girls are done bathing. I guess I'll lie down for a bit. Huh? What was that? 
I thought I heard someone talking outside the room. Oh, I never thought I'd hear anyone call themselves a genius so seriously. That's another thing that I just thought now. The thing with people who are seen as geniuses is a lot of times they don't really say, yes, I'm a genius. They're seen as geniuses, but do they actually ever state, yes, I'm a genius? Or do they just like, no, there's plenty of things that we still don't understand. And they're just like, oh man, you're a genius. No, there are still things. Genius! <laughs> So Suganama is going night skiing, huh? He sure is full of energy. Yeah. But I'm feeling lazy. I don't really feel like doing any night skiing. I got plenty of skiing done today and it'll be more tomorrow. Uh, where are you going anyway? I have a feeling that I understand where this is going. But Tari excitedly grabbed my arm and dragged me out of the room. It's quite predictable, if so. Hey, where are we going? Yeah, but I thought we were. That was a well established thing that he's the densest protagonist I've ever seen. But Tari drew a deep breath, a deep sigh. I knew it. Well, aren't they in the bath? So, so go that's all. Oh, my, he might eat it. What? Coro Mido. Sina me Tyson says, some of your sons got that. Dice not, dice not, Takara no chisel. Mataro then showed me a little piece of paper. This is. It was a rough map of the area surrounding the lost. Don't tell me. So he wants to go peep at the bath. But Taru, do you not realize we might have barrels flung at us and stuff? Whatever the hell it was that was thrown at the frigging male characters in Persona 4 when they happened to freaking stumble upon it. But are you sure being persuasive today? Angels as naked as... This was definitely good news. But my conscience sure wasn't letting me off the hook easily. But, however... But you may regret it if you do. Yeah, I know. Caught up in Wataru's excitement, I nodded at him. I guess I had no choice but to peep. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly, someone put their hand on my shoulder. Turning around, there was... Naraka, don't scare me like that. Didn't you guys go to the bath? Well... <laughs> yeah, if you guys never get out, we won't get to bathe. Panicking, I shook Nanaka's hand off my shoulder. <laughs> Nanaka smiled and did a little salute before heading off to the public bath. <sighs> 
That was close. 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 That was I've never actually played the games, but I've seen playthroughs of it, and like it's like a complete acid trip kind of thing where like he eats his meat and he's just like turns into all kinds of things. Just like one, he transforms, he's like bigger, or he turns into a giant chicken or an acid induced freaking hallucination kind of creature. That face right there reminds me of that. The acid trip one. You sure keep thinking positively about this. Yeah. This could end up in disaster. I prepared myself mentally. Hey, does this path go outside the inn? Ha, ha, hang on a moment, Wataru. Is it just you and Yoshiki here? Because if so. Who's to say that Tsuginami isn't leading you into a trap? It sure is cold, maybe I should go get a muffler. Yeah, so much you can't wait. I do believe this may be a trap, Wataru. Wataru kept pulling my arm as he marched on. Alright, I'm coming, so just let go of me. Wataru and I followed the route marked on the map. Man, we sure are walking through a lot of snow. I'm starting to get even more suspicious. We walked through the snow for about five more minutes. And then we finally arrived at our destination. Never mind, it wasn't! <laughs> well, I thought that Tsukunami was going to actually send him into a trap, but it turned out he was actually led him to the right location after all. In the public bath, Anzu Cook and Akane were bathing peacefully. <sighs> the dialogue does not really go with the actual CG here, really, does it? <laughs> How can you swim in that anyway? Doesn't look like there's much room. Sorry, Akane, there is actually someone watching right now. I always find these kind of things odd. You got like this hot spring, hot bath, whatever. You're like, ah, lovely. But what happens the second you get out of it in this freezing as freaking. I would say hell, but that's stupid, really, isn't it? You know, just freaking freezing temperature. And you just step out of it. It'd be worse than whenever you step out of a bath or a shower in your own house, wouldn't it? Like, ah! Okay, now it suits it there now, doesn't it? She is she's doing her job as a convenient censoring, you see. Because as you can see, she's got her hand blocking here and conveniently got like all this and yes. So it's like don't need to actually black out the screen because there is no for of nudity that you two be like, OH NO, A NIPPLE! <laughs> that ba 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 should sound a bit more bubbly, you know, because you're a bit underwater, you're like... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Yeah, I was feeling guilty before we actually started peeping, but those feelings had just gone straight out the window. Now I simply couldn't take my eyes off the scene at hand. At hand. <laughs> Ow.
What the hell, Akane? <laughs> Seriously, this is like... Whenever anime, like, have like a scene where they're like in the hot springs and a bunch of girls, you always have something like this go down. And I just think, does that shit even happen in real life? Seriously. It seems a bit ridiculous. Really, what Anzu's doing is more realistic <laughs> sounding, really, isn't it? Just kind of chilling in the back and it's like, ba 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 ba. Yeah, you're right. You know, there is something that I just realized is Nanaka isn't there, so what if she turns up behind you guys? I predict that's gonna happen. Aren't you exaggerating a bit now? <laughs> Well, maybe not. <laughs> or maybe I was right. <laughs> oh, she's right behind them. Oh, <laughs> Hey, Wataru? Don't you think something's a bit weird? Yeah, it's kinda cause uh, she's peeping with us. Well, he is Coco's number one fan, so of course he'd say that, wouldn't he? Uh, well, sorry, you do realize that there should only be the two of us here, right? For once, it's not Yoshiki that's the dense one. <laughs> Hell is officially frozen over. Then, who are you talking to? <laughs> we suddenly turned around. Naka, what are you doing here? I have to act surprised for some reason, even though I suspiciously knew that someone was down who was probably you. Uh, chilling. She wore a mischievous smile. Just give up, Watari, you're no match for Nanaka. Nanaka, uh, we, uh, we're just passing by and... No, I don't think anyone would buy that. I prepared myself for the worst. Or we could have just been like, we were just passing by and we happened to stumble across it and then we just like kind of got a bit distracted, just like, well, Tari, do you believe the ship that we're actually seeing here? We were just kind of, it was like we couldn't take our eyes off because we were absolutely baffled by that. And then we, we just, the, uh, the, the, nah. 
I can't come up with an explanation now. I'm so sorry. Well, having said that, the Nagger handed us each a pocket heater. Nanaka had a smile like the Virgin Mary on her face that she saw of the two criminals. Let's go, Ataru, we've been defeated. On the way back, we couldn't help but feel that we had completely lost sight of something important. Yes? Ah, Nanaka, we already seen you naked, just like, WHAT?! Yeah, and the other round, I didn't see that! Yeah, that's because I off-screened that, because YouTube obviously wouldn't find that appropriate. Hey, I uh, don't know how to answer that. <laughs> but really, how did Nanaka figure out that with Tara and I were going to go peep at the girls in the bath? I've, I think it was probably obvious, but I can't quite remember it myself. So Isla Tsunami get, tipped her off, or they pretty much seemed suspicious, and she just kind of followed them. Seems likely. After getting out of the bath, we got up in our room again and chatted for a while. We watched some TV, played some cards, and even though it was in the middle of the night, everyone was pretty energetic. That happens to me a lot. <laughs> Like, it'll just be the middle of the night, and then just like, I could have been up all day, and I'd be like, Energy! Energy! Woo! And then be like, I got nothing to do with this energy. Oh, fuck. <sighs> yeah, I woke up way too early today, and then we spent a lot of time on the slopes, so of course I'm a bit tired. Did they not get to bathe then, or what? So, will you tell us what you wanted to do, uh, wanted us to do soon? Why not? It's, uh, it's Tuesday. Well, recording this anyway. Uh, it's New Year's Eve. I'd completely forgotten. So that's why the, that, uh, why that, uh, what, what, what? That's why that, that music show was on. I thought it was some rerun. I see. Okay. Because the Naka had caught us in a bad spot earlier, I really couldn't refuse. She'd been using with Taro as an errand boy for a while now, maybe more like a waiter. And Zukoku and Akane were still having fun with their card games. Tsukunami and Amikaze both seemed to be engrossed in the TV show airing at the moment. Hey, Nanaka. Why are we playing Go? If you want to play board games, we'll also get Shogi and Othello, you know? So, why are we playing Go? We've played it like a million times now. Just! Uh, give up. I know the rules, but I've barely played the game. I'm really no match for you. Yeah, I forgot about that. Other one is fine. Better if this can't be. <laughs> I <laughs> pitch, man. Lucky you somehow know my every move. I can't win against you. Maybe she's some kind of predictive genius. That doesn't seem too unlikely right now. Or maybe, maybe if you backtrack to the next route, you'll see what's going on here. Yoshiyuki-kun, you're thinking about what you're thinking. What, really? 
And I thought I had a really good poker face. Please give it a rest. Can we play some old game? I looked up and checked what was going on in the room. The singing contest was about halfway finished on TV and there were lots of people cheering. <笑>そう、セクナー皆津城よ。これから地で血を洗う大合戦が繰り広げられようとしているのだ。もっとゆったりした心で歌を聞かねば、戦地へ赴く者たちの魂を理解することはできんぞ。<laughs> what the hell? Also notice this is the same kind of pattern as their usual hat, isn't it? What the heck are they talking about? Uh, well, let's try to figure out what they're talking about. Okay, so you got a singing contest, and the whole bloody battle comes in with the whole fans. Just like, this singer was the best one. No, fucking hell, that one was better. No, that one was better. You wanna preach me a. And they all stop beating the crap out of each other. Anzu, who had been playing cards, suddenly stood up. I think I know where this is going because I saw a comment like maybe like less than an hour ago on the uh, well I don't know if it'd be the previous part of the part before the previous part because I don't know how long this recording session has gone on for and when the split into two parts which inevitably will be because that's how I tend to record these days will be so I don't have a clue what part of this will be but uh I think I see where this is going. We all looked over at Anzu. We're going for another Persona 4 kind of thing. Nanako looked like she was having fun. Anyway, it must be a way out of this hell of everlasting losses. The King's Game has returned! <laughs> 